HR department, Saida, you want to? Hi, well, I'll introduce myself to everyone because I already spoke to her briefly. So mm -hmm. I work for the Human Resources Department. My name is Saida Gonzalez. I'm the Employee Health and Wellness Manager. So we oversee the wellness uh, division for all 2,500 city employees. And so we oversee the EAP program, which, you know, has the, you know, a sub we deal with substance abuse, mm -hmm. people dealing with, you know, counseling issues and stuff like that. And we also oversee the drug and alcohol policy that the city of Laredo has. So we make sure we enforce that. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're welcome you every month. Us. Oh, here comes Anna's staff, so okay. still no call. All right, then let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Okay. Public comments from anyone? Manager, nobody signed no. sign up for um, public so comments, but the stakeholders either can make comments here or in the in the announcement side. So I know we've got border region, we, we got scan, and we got gateway. I don't know if you want to. You have comments or announcements? Um, hello, hi. Uh, my name is Ivan Pacheco. I work for Gateway Community Health Center. We're going to be having our health fair, our annual health fair, on August tenth. Um, from 9 to 11. We'll be uh, having backpack. It's, it's the back to school health fair that we do. Um, last year it was very successful. We usually have like about a thousand attendees, um, either patients from the clinic or just people out in the community that go. Um, there'll be backpacks with school supplies. There's going to be uh, vaccines, physicals, I believe, and and it's at your, your building. We're at the central clinic. If, if you oh, can here. send us Thank some information and we'll send it out to, to all the commission okay. members. I will. I'll send the flyer out. Is there a criteria for the backpacks? Is it? No, actually, it's um, open a lot to everyone. Think, yes, it's open to everybody. A lot of people have that conception, that it, misconception that it's just for patients, but it's not. Anyway, okay. you can pretty much go on. Great. Scan, do you want to make comments? If you have any comments, do you want now or in the announcement section? No, there's no, no comments. No comments? This time. Okay, Thank good you. Madam Chair. But right. no, no one else signed up for public comment. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And we'll pass it on. The approval of the minutes we have May 1st, June 5th was discussion because we had no quorum. They were uh, emailed to us at some point. What, what, still what, you, what you can do, Madam Chair, is go over them, see if anyone has changes, you mm -hmm. just can't right. take a if motion they have to changes accept them for it, yes. uh, uh, until we have a quorum. He's number six, we need seven. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Now I look like a piece of popcorn. No, <laughs> you don't. I'm waiting for it to grow out a little bit, but right now I'm only... Oh, I love it. It's curly. It's Thank you. So how are things across the pond? Oh, it was nice. <laughs> it was beautiful. We went to Spain also. It's so close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, basket. are there any uh, comments about our minutes? Anybody? Any additions, amendments? We have quorum. We have a quorum. Madam Chair, motion to approve the minutes as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Discussion and possible action. Detox facility, remodeling potential funding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why I sent KGNS to you. <laughs> I know I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I don't know if the the uh, detox committee wants to give the report first. And the update on the um, where we are at on your okay. Yes, we have a more or less uh, design that follows the Texas code for detox. Also for city, for the city. Just give me okay. Y'all, somebody want to see a copy of it? Where's the entrance? <laughs> We're lost. There's an entrance there. Where? Oh, okay. Entrance. Oh, there it is. Okay. Don't we pass it around? Or yes. Why don't you? It's pretty big. Nice. Mm -hmm. These are all rooms here in the kitchen. And how many rooms? 23. 20, 23 rooms. 23 rooms. Wow. That's great. Great. How are you? Then you must have had good news from the hospitals. Yeah. That's the next one. That's part. the next one. Yeah. <laughs> That's why when she said I was going to ask. She left? Oh, no. She already, I saw a lady. She'll, she'll be back. She'll be back. On, on she said she had somewhere else to go. And I said, do you want to say anything of eight? Nothing. Okay. So maybe the has everyone yes. had a chance to look at that big map with 23 rooms? Wow. That's incredible. Give something to that. I do nothing to that. There's grass. There's grass, an outdoor area, basketball court. Mr. Montemayor? No fair in the winter. In the summer, you to be outside for dinner and I spend up in London. Does he want to make any comments? Do you want to make any comments on on on, the on your meeting? <coughs> comments on meeting? On on this? Yes. On the meeting you had about this, is that what it was about? Yes, we had it earlier. Uh, this is just a rough graph of how many units, single rooms we can get in there. Uh, it follows the Texas Administrative Code for a detox, and it should also work for the city. Perfect. Perfect. We're yeah. coming up with a cost. Yes, we're let waiting for the, the money issues. Stuff. Let me let me now go into that, Madam Chair. But let me thank all the committees for meeting. But the detox, uh, I think today had a, a a good meeting, and thank you to Mr. Montemayor and and the folks from from SCAN and our staff. And Jesse is in Washington, so couldn't be here. Jesse Hernandez, but he's part of the group. They've been, uh, and, and really Mr. Montemayor, to do a preliminary design, to, to share it with you. You all have seen the facility, so it's got the potential of having the rooms for detox, uh, um, a green area so people can walk, yeah. and, and then potential for growth. Yeah. Um, so 
we he I've asked him if he can give us a preliminary cost because th there has to be some reconstruction and, and, and retrofitting but from minimal to to major because we need those costs mm -hmm. what, what is what would it take for it to open tomorrow to get started and right. with, with the 12 rooms or six rooms to begin with um, it has to meet state code uh, so we can open and then continue to work on it and that's what he's working on so I really appreciate that because we the city and the mayor in our meeting with the hospitals did commit and it has to be approved by city council uh, to to begin some seat money for the remodeling construction of the detox and we no figure was was approved and it has to be approved by council but the discussion was minimum a hundred to three hundred thousand so that's the city's commitment and it has to be approved and, and we have our budget a workshop on, on August 21st through the 22nd, 23rd through the 24th. And that's where they'll approve the allotment and then take it to city council for public hearing in September. It has to have a public hearing. But I think in, in uh, is it that you were there that in, when the city manager committed and the mayor asked her, <coughs> asked the, the, the co-interim city manager, can we put some money and Yes. Was, she was right next to you. She said yes. Wow. And so the proposal, depending on, on the initial cost, will be between 100 to 300 thousand from the city. We've asked the county. The county says there's no money. No. But we're going to continue to work with the judge and the commissioners because uh, everybody's going to have to put it a little bit. You were there. The hospitals committed. We 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 owe them a report on on costs of what it could mean for them in reducing their cost for taking mm -hmm. care of a person for detox right. that they don't need to, they don't need hospitalization, but that's the only place. As soon as we give them, then they can commit to a hard number, but you were there, they've said they would, but more, not for brick and mortar. They, they want to commit to operations. Hospitals. And it's two costs. All of you know, we, we need the cost for the construction right. and then the cost for, for mm -hmm. operations. Mm -hmm. um, the final thing, and this is the comment on, uh, Monday city on August the 5th we have city council it's already proposed in the agenda and that's why the, uh, the reporter was here um, in doing research what other cities are doing and in looking for other funding revenues um, we found out what Austin did and it was our legal folks and us having a brainstorming um, and there's this governing governing code under Chapter 350, 331, that's really under transportation. Anything to improve uh, highways, walkways, streets, to make it safe and to improve efficiency. What Austin did under safety was you, de you develop a taxing entity, a, a, a governing board, um, in this case by the city, the city would take it to council and approval governing board under this chapter 431 that's a taxing entity to collect revenues for, for the detox. What Austin did, that's exactly what they followed, uh, a, a section under chapter 431 of the transportation code to develop <coughs> What they did develop a strictly alcohol detox center mm. to get drunk drivers out of the streets and that improved safety. Mm -hmm. And that was approved. So Laredo is going to do the same thing uh, in our city council meeting in, in August the 5th. We're going to propose developing a, a governing council that will be able to be a taxing entity to develop revenues to fund the detox that's a permanent body and so everybody at the city is pretty excited about that tomorrow uh, I'm meeting with the city attorney to develop the structure and present it to council because they have to approve an ordinance so that's a permanent taxing entity to fund the detox center okay but are this ours going to be called to make the street safer from front well drivers? no no I, no no, that's what Austin did. Ours is 
in reading, and that's why we're meeting with Eagle tomorrow, and Andrea is going to go with me. It's so general. That it can be friends. That as long as it's it's tied in to safety, to safety well, and, yeah. and the common good for Laredo's, its public purpose is to reduce substance abuse that right. could be a well, safety issue on, on the streets. They, get a city bus. They, they are for them, we know that, but right. I'm going to leave it up to the lawyers to do that, yes. but they're confident, so tomorrow we're having the meeting to develop the ordinance mm -hmm. to take it to council, so what, what public purpose it eventually states, some has, has to be tied into transportation, but <coughs> I'll leave it up to the attorneys to do that. Well, is I there know. a deadline? No, but the quicker the better because we need the monies. That's why yeah. we, we want to have a funding stream, funding stream by by the the approval of the budget. Yeah, and that's August. that's we have to approve it in September oh. to implement it October one. Okay. Um, and so tomorrow we'll, we'll give safe. you the details. But in general, what we've read. And I've got the chapter here. I've already studied it backwards and frontwards. Um, it's so broad, the subsection. It's a subsection of the sure. transportation code. It just says you can develop a, a local city governing body for the, for the public purpose, for a good public purpose in having a detox center to help persons with substance abuse and treat them, get them off substance use, Get them off the is, is, on. Is, is a good public purpose. Yes, yeah, definitely. So we're excited about that. Okay. Um, and then we also want to do an MOU with the county to make sure that the county also helps us with some funding. The land is, is part of it mm -hmm. for the detox center, and we appreciate that, but it's going to call it's going to need money to operate it. And so it, all of it between the hospitals, the city, the county, this taxing entity, if we all put in, it'll support this. Right. Plus, plus behavioral health and substance use in general is always in need of funding. Right. Always. And, and our city, as it grows, is going to have to have the tax base and the resources okay. to provide. I shared with the work group also that most large cities have a another taxing entity, and nobody likes to talk about taxes, but. San Antonio has Austin, Houston, Dallas, a hospital district for nice. indigent care. And it's tied in, San Antonio is called University Health System. Mm -hmm. It's the medical school, the city, the county, and the state, but it's tax base. And so they charge everybody, I think it's 50 cents per 100,000 valuation. It, it's, it's based on your Income. home. Oh. No, in the home, home, home valuation. So they, they tax that to fund the hospital so anyone who doesn't have insurance, they, they treat anyone, university health system, but if, if, if you're indigent and don't have or can't find a doctor, that's who has to treat you. University health system. University health system, and, and because it's tied in with the medical school, all the residents or the right. faculty provide health care, and it's at a very reduced, right. it's at one third of what the private hospitals charge. Hmm. And you got Francisco Cigarroa doing open heart surgery for university system. And wow. Wow. I mean, that's the kind of care you, you get, but it's tax base. And Laredo, and in many communities talking about taxes. Yes, it, it's not a it's, it's a fun same. subject. They don't yeah. they're trying to kill us. But, but it's for... Uh, How many pennies? <laughs> and that's what's going to be decided. That's a conversation the mayor and the judge are also having because usually it's the, the, mm -hmm. the county system that initiates the tax base. But it can be the city. But in most of the places, it's, it's the mm -hmm. county and in partnership with the city. Um, but that's long term. Mm -hmm. I think short term is, is developing this governing um, right. council strictly for the detox. Uh, and that'll be a permanent base, so I, I think that's good news. Yeah. And there anything you want to add on the forward 31? <coughs> she's going she's gonna to become the expert. All right. <coughs> good luck. <laughs> but then we'll keep you abreast. Tomorrow we do meet with our legal department to develop the ordinance and present it on Monday, August the 5th, to council to approve. And so that's, uh, I know all mm -hmm. of us were worried about a permanent funding stream. Mm -hmm. This is part of it.
Yes. So I don't know if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. But we'll have more information after we meet with legal tomorrow. But I think it's promising. Yes, yes. it is. Thank you. It's a good start. Yes, it is. Okay, then we want to go to the services directory data system. He emailed it to us. Madam Chair, I um, emailed you all of you a, an updated report on the presentation that in December we have the consultant give us on making the um, website the uh, the website the directory particularly more user friendly. Mm -hmm. We already did one update. The city's information technology staff already put in tabs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you got to use it. You yes. can tab and it'll take you to the yes. section. Still need some work because it, it won't take you back. You got to go scroll, but at least you don't have to go to. If you want to see who's doing substance use, who's doing counseling, who's mm -hmm. doing rehab, mm -hmm. you can tab on that and it'll take you to the to the section. So it, it's it's something. They actually reviewed, and, and you do have my report, um, that the presentation that the consultant did, Mr. Mr. Pilton, um, is actually was, was good. And the price that he's quoting, 3600 and a, a one time, and then 250 a month for maintenance, <laughs> is not bad. It's just... Not good. Well, <laughs> the funding. Yes, right. But is that for maintenance or for hosting? For hosting, for hosting, for hosting. For hosting. For hosting. Um, that th they, they reviewed the whole proposal and they actually said it's a, it's a good proposal um, that if they have the money if the money's there their recommendation from the city was yeah. do it in the meantime they'll do what they can to continue to build in tabs make it more user friendly and they've already done one 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 intent. Uh, so how or who do we approach? Whoever up to this, do you think? Oh, I think that would be a good idea. I, I think you can approach uh, on the, the county side, the commissioners who appointed you, on the city side, the city councilman. On the city side, I can tell you that the discretionary monies they have is strictly for brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. So oh. it, it wouldn't support this. I'm not sure on the, on the county costs. side um, what the discretionary monies from the county commissioners, what they can spend it on. But well, on the city council side, it's got to be on brick and mortar or tourism. They have, they have two two funding stamps, uh, streams, one for tourism uh, and one for brick and mortar. And that's why most of them fund paving, streets, speed bumps, lights, in, in their precincts, in their... In their mm -hmm. Sidewalks, right? Tearing holes. down, except, oh, uh, what do you call it, the one on Saunders, a little housing project there. It's brick and mortar. That, That's terrible. Uh, but can we get in somewhere on the agenda for the August meeting? Uh, no, you can get in the agenda mm -hmm. and, and, and petition council uh, and at the same time, Commissioner's Court to see how they they're going to discuss the budget. The, the $3,600. Um, Drop in the bucket. That's it. For them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that <laughs> It's After you look at our taxes, it's a drop in the bucket. It, you have that right. You were appointed by Council and the Commissioner's Court to go back, give them, and you do. You just turned in your annual report. Um, do we have a copy of the, of the annual report so they can, if you want to see it, but we'll send it to you. You signed it. And the, then the, the council cover letter. then goes and requests it, right? Yeah. Or do they have funds? Well, that's, we, they're studying the budget for next year, and it's got to be approved by the 1st of October. So oh, if we get in on the ground floor and, oh, hey, we're okay. here because... We can, we, there's time to get you in and do a report mm -hmm. for August the 5th to council uh, and, and request this. Uh, I'll give them any update. You gave it. You gave them your annual report already. Well, that's but, a good update. But, but a report, a verbal report, is good. I know the other committees and commissions and advisory groups do that as well. Okay. Uh, so that's one option. But so get us on the agenda then. Okay. I think it's a, a great um, recommendation to go to city council, but it may be a little bit. Uh, Maybe a little bit to push for a 3600 website if the city's already <coughs> started to include some tabs and started to build it into the to the page. I think that that we should utilize those resources. Uh, that's just my my opinion. But 
Can, can, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Didn't hear you. That I'm saying it's a little far fetched to go to city council and ask for thirty six hundred dollars for a website when it's already being inclusive of the city's website, and we can just utilize that and, and promote it in the way that it's easy to to find or the resources. Because keep in mind that the directory was not an original idea from the from the Drug and Alcohol Commission. It was actually from SCAN. So SCAN actually does the legwork to make make sure and maintain that they have all the all the for current contacts and resources available. So, you think it should just be like a link or something? Technically, it should. It, I, I feel like it should be that. Okay. I, I don't think it's it, it deems of a website not yet. Now, in the case that when we do have the detox center and we have a dedicated, we can have a dedicated website for the detox, and then we have our what our subcommittees are, our subgroups where it's our our. Uh, <coughs> education and awareness and we can include uh, the aftercare the, 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 the living the transitional living uh, the detox center and then all these resources I think that that would be great and then maybe we could go up to City Council and say look we need a website dedicated completely to the detox center and all of the resources that consist of this promotion but solely alone for the directory I don't think so I, I, I honestly don't believe that it's, it's necessary I think if we have the right promotion or the right brochures that we've been talking about or the posters or who scan having to to get this information out, I think that that would be suffice. But having to go to city council and ask them for 3600 I'd say personally, no. I'd rather ask for that money to the detox center. <laughs> and how soon would that be? I mean, then we'd have to wait another year until next August. But they've already started working on it. They've already started including it in their website, so it's already on there. Mm. The, the decision is up to the to the commission. Whatever you want to do, um, I or maybe even show up and say, "Okay, we're asking for this for the future for as soon as the detox center is up." Correct. For yeah. to be ready and have have it in. I don't know limbo somewhere. Have it in savings to be ready to use as needed. I, I think Ms. Rodriguez, Madam Chair, has a good point. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly, Mr. Thompson, who brought up making it more user friendly, so everyone you want it used. It, it's a good product. You don't want it hidden within the city, um, though. And it already has had. In, in asking our IT how many hits it's had, it's constantly being looked at. So people wow. are, are are using it. Um, and yes, IT, the city's IT can continue to work on it. But immediately, one day, they build in that tab, and, and and he himself said we need to make it even better. But it, it's got a tab set already. So did everybody get to to use the tab already? No, it's already posted with the tabs that the city built into the directory. Um, How do you mm -hmm. go? You just go to the city first, and then you to the city, and then the uh, the website. The it's also on the face. I don't know. We loaded it to the Facebook. Um, the we, link's we, on there. The link. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it should have it too. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. I think you can also plant the seed. Uh, yes, I, I think, think I it's would good like to, give to a approach report verbally. And because so, where would you find it? Like, I think we should approach them and just say, so "Keep us in mind, we're working like on the detox center. There, least, it should be up and there. running within twelve months. I don't know. We'll give them a so date of some sort, like logo and we would like for you to consider right setting aside or coming up okay. with oh, thirty-six hundred dollars when it's it there. is up and running." Perfect. And then once you open it, you, you can oh, hit that's the tabs. Not, that's not bad. So for, we'll say for the detox center instead of for just the directory. Yeah, I, Madam Chair, I think your 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 biggest plug right now is money for the for the detox. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but but I I think this is this is important too, um, and we can continue. It, it's in your report, and it's going around uh, a hard copy your annual report to mm -hmm. to the mayor and, and city council uh we we're about to send it to the judge and the commissioners they need to to have it too because right. it's your your annual report mm -hmm. or your next six months and your full full report mm -hmm. um, well see the only worry in the back of my mind is so when we go to them after they've spent millions mm -hmm. to put it all together and then they're going to say and you want 3600 more and they're going to slap me and send me out the door mm -hmm. You know, by and the same token, you can go and ask for 3600 and say, oh, that's all you need? Yes, that's true. Well, but I'm saying it's only for 
the website for the detox center. But now after hearing Colleen's perspective yes. on this, I'm, I'm kind of leaning it's back. True. I agree with what she's saying that we should wait mm -hmm. and then make a full-blown website once everything is in place. Correct. I think it's sufficient right now as I'm looking at it right now yeah. and I just it's sufficient no, for the website. What we, See, what we but, wanted. But we want a website for the detox. Mm -hmm. Right. Which and once all, everything is in place. The detox. It's a website for the Drug and Alcohol Commission that is inclusive of the detox and all the, other, all the other anything else we know that are so resources you want to see that are see and, and at that time it could be built for that purpose. Okay. Thank you. I'm not going to ask them for money, you guys. Remember. You can ask them for money for the for when we need it. Remember I said that, Madam Chair, that the uh, monies, the discretionary monies that the council member has, I'm not sure about the commissioners, is strictly e yeah, either tourism or brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. This is brick and mortar, the detox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you may want to ask them for... Uh, no, you can sell them on the idea that the website is digital bricks and mortar. That's you right. Know, because, <laughs> it, you know, we are located, there is an address your website address and it's just a digital bricks and mortar you know mm. what is the difference between <laughs> I don't right. know they'll go for that but is it a stretch we can you're try. welcome to try it <laughs> we can try you're it. welcome to try <laughs> let me tell you that the the two commissions that the mayor really is he supports all the different advice we have when as i've shared with you the airport for parks yeah. for utilities they all have either an advisory or commission but the ones that he strongly advocates and you all have 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 educated him is this the drug and alcohol and as well the blue ribbon committee for people with disabilities mm -hmm. it, those two are he he his Blue Ribbon Committee for People with Disability, that's the mayor's, not not council. This one is 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 commissioner's court and council because each one, mm -hmm. each elected appointed. official appointed yeah. you. Um, but the mayor's very, keeps up bringing up when, and, and then you have one councilman in particular who's very committed. He brings up a, every, every opportunity he can, he, he can mm -hmm. a report on the drug and alcohol and that's Martinez. councilman Dr. Martinez. Uh, and and he, he's the one who also brought up the, the chapter 431. It was legal in him. Mm -hmm. And so he's, oh. he's very... So he's on, he knew. He, he, this is it printed out. Councilman Dr. Mar Mar uh, Marta Martinez is very much... <coughs> he asked me for reports all the time. What is the commission Good. doing? Good. Uh, when does the detox open? How do we fund it? He, I, oh. I get a call from him. All the time all the time oh well good good well then let's do it um should we just go and make a report then i i think you should i think it's good to remind them especially since we're going to address the chapter 431 as a funding and we're going to address during the budget workshop monies to start mm -hmm. seat monies to start the detox it'd be a good opportunity for you all to make a and, and overall, what you've done. Dr. Gonzalez, I know that it's a three day workshop. So, is there an agenda or a timeline as to when this would be discussed? It'll, it'll probably be in the last day. And so, I'll, I'll we'll know by the time the budget workshop agenda is done when so the, the public can. can it'll, it'll either be addressed as an item at the end, or you mm -hmm. can make it on the first day during the public comment period. But if it's a, an item that's already to be discussed specifically, that's best to make the public comment then. And we'll know what day it is. And we'll okay. let you know. All right, well, just let us know. And as many of us that can show up, we'll be there in mass to show support. And that we're hoping they'll pass. Yes, I agree. Yes. And Madam Chair, so everyone doesn't go on a, on a, a triste note on, on the... 3800 for the uh, data system. Let me ask the city manager because she had approved, it, it never went through, but she had approved the $600 for, uh, to do the promotion at Malden Norte. That's still pending. Right? If you still want to have it. Well, that's that's there. They, they, she approved, the city manager did approve the 400 for that. 
And so that's whenever you all are ready, and I guess next is the... Well, she's going to give a report. She'll tell you what we've discussed. And, and so um, we'll ask her about the, if there's any money in the general fund that they can find for the $3,600. We'll, we'll ask her, too. Let, let's let's see what she says. Mm -hmm. okay. She and he, because it's co-interim -city, co yes. city managers. I, I had a question about uh, the uh, website. Well, first off, you know, what they did is really nice. I mean, you press the link and it goes straight to the area. To the section. Yeah. I, I just have a concern, though, because when I, I guess when I was envisioning this, I was thinking, well, this is a massive juggernaut of different agencies, mm -hmm. and different agencies change information, not necessarily on a, on a certain given time. I understand that maybe Scan is, is updating it, I guess. But I was kind of hoping that uh, all these different agencies could be updating it, which was the whole point of the of that website, is so that they could update it on their own, so we wouldn't have to worry about it. Like, we just <coughs> like that. I guess my um, my question is, is what about these agencies that are not affiliated to Scan? How are they inputting this information? Well, this one time, remember, he, the update was was a, a task of of the commission. You all updated it. The creator was 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 scanned um, but you all updated what we did was we surveyed each agency and said this is what the old directory says can you update it in fact Andrea yeah. was the one who so specifically it's, it's sent it open to, 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 you know, there. Like, it's a directory that's done for, for, for the coalition that we, we have and it just was the base and then like Dr. Gonzalez is saying everybody had the opportunity to actually update and and, and, and Well, I, I guess since we have this, this is nice and all, but is there a way that uh, that when they click the drug and alcohol resource, it would go straight to a, a page for us, and then maybe there could be a contact if, if you believe you're in from, you know, maybe you could have a directory here, which would be to a link to the directory, and it could also have a, a notice saying if, if you if you think your agency should be on here, please contact sure. this number so that right. your that, information can go there. That can be done. Yeah. That can uh, be done. Our, our and then you have your different groups, like the detox, the rehab, and the transition living. And then I guess we could just say coming soon on those if necessary. Or yes. If we, we could have the, the whatever information that the committee is, is putting forth. I, I just It just seems like uh, this is nice. Uh, you just click, but it's, it's more of the directory. It's less of... Uh, of the Drug and Alcohol Commission, and that's my only criticism of, of it is, um, I, I'm not saying anything against the scan, but I'm just saying, Don't go to that hey, if you're a counselor, you should be able to get your information on there. You should have a number to contact to get your information on the list. Why doesn't it? Don't no, agree or disagree or... Can do that. They can put that note in, in, right now we're hosting that website, mm -hmm. and so the, the city has, has the option to add, manipulate, the right. directory so anything we want to add to it yes the, the, our the city IT folks can can add to it mm -hmm. uh, can put anything um, you, there should be and it, it, I know it's on the Facebook a, a little it's the mission and who you are about the Commission I don't know that it's there in, in that website we shouldn't be, but it is on the Facebook we could just include that you could but it can be included yeah. because you all did develop a mission statement um, and the commission members, uh, so that's there. And then you can include, like, to, to soon to come, the different agencies, like besides the detox, the rehab, the transition living. Because if you want to see the website for the Blue Ribbon Committee, that they have a resource page, but then they talk about them and they provide. If you need resources for workforce or want to know something about ADA, 
you click here and that's off also the city's website and all off the health department's website and it does have numbers for you to call and it contact in fact it has a hotline mm -hmm. great um, but mm -hmm. here again like scan has a hotline border region has a hotline so there wasn't a hotline for the commission the drug and alcohol commission because it, it each one of the agencies has a has a hotline mm -hmm. but whatever you all want us to put your mission statement the commission members uh, that we, the, we can put it on the different groups yes. soon to come sure oh all of the above great the above. Let's, okay. let's do it all <laughs> have it all on there yeah well I just think there should be a number to call so you can include your information yeah. or if your information changes you should be able to call a number and talk to somebody and say hey my information changes and that would be a quick fix for yeah what one day will be where you can just get your password and update your own information right. without us having to do it but at least in the in the temp in the interim uh, mm -hmm. i think they should have uh, the ability to do that because what if there are some counselors out there that you know maybe they're new maybe they uh maybe they don't know who to contact I right okay all right good points thank you and we go on to PSA, Rodriguez. Um, we, we met two weeks ago with, uh, with Ms. Erica and uh, um, with public access. I'm so sorry, I'm just I'm trying to think of everything. And there's so many different things and tasks that I carry. So um, we met about two weeks ago and we discussed uh, the PSAs that we had. Ms. Quintanilla had already developed two different PSAs. One was for a graduation, uh, or actually prom, and then we created one for graduation. And then we had actually three PSAs. And then we had come up with an idea from the last uh, work group uh, to talk about drinking and driving. And then we had talked about the texting uh, and driving. And then we went into something else with regards to the vape pens. And I think uh, Chief Masia had last time I was in here, but through Ms. Quintanilla and Stephen, they had mentioned that uh, there were some new updates that uh, now it's the, it's a penalty to actually be be smoking if you're under the age of 18, is it, or 21 for vape pens or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that information is, is very new to the public. And so if that information were to get out there, it would be good and so we discussed these things uh with public access because as we're trying to use the resources that we already have and not um get out of what we don't have uh public access is a resource that is provided to the drug and alcohol commission um and so we went out there and we asked them how we could go about producing these psas and then getting them out to the media and so they had they had expressed that they do have a they have a full booking that they actually have a lot of work because they are um, low on staff. And if they're not between having to come to meetings and record or having to go out there and do PSAs or be at the press conferences or the sister city events or anything that is a city event that they have to record, um, then we really are, are limited to what they can actually do. And so if they, we are gonna do anything that we needed to be able to produce it there on, on site or with ample time at a designated time to make sure that we are um, we are we are we have a quality of actual work and not um, overuse their staff or not take advantage of it as we should. And so we discussed that. I, I know that we had a, a PSA that I thought was very very uh, very cool, very simple, and it didn't take very much. And it was still a lot for them to actually produce that. So we've actually minimized it, and we're actually going to utilize pictures for. Some of the some of the scenes and then you know hopefully get that out into the into the media but that should be one way of actually getting uh, the Drug and Alcohol Commission name out there and with everybody's mission in mind we do have a lot of stakeholders and we want to be able to take that into consideration um, <coughs> one example is is we're gonna be able to put it out on uh, radio possibly and we'll convert those PSA video PSAs into uh, radio and vice versa those video PSAs will go on to our our Facebook and social media right now is the actual uh, means of, of communication for many and so uh, and then hopefully when we do have our website that we can add those links and, and, and those PSAs so that 
uh, school teachers or you know the the ITD programs are able to utilize and our goal in mind is to actually have it to be where it's timeless we're going to be able to utilize that one graduation or that one prom PSA it needs to be good for mm -hmm. like 20 years from now yeah. just so that we're able to continue with the message of, of the drug and alcohol uh, if, the, if the monies are there then we definitely will utilize them but uh, as of right now we don't have the means to actually be producing so we are going through the public access <coughs> we're going to try to see if we can produce one PSA when I did say that we wanted one PSA per month they were like you're not going to get that you're going to get <coughs> one PSA every quarter or every mm -hmm. twice a year or something yeah. like that so that was a little bit um, disappointing uh, but that things might change. Uh, July for them is a very busy, busy month, and so maybe August is something that they'll have less time to 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 give on a PSA or other things. Um, so that that's where we're at with the with the PSA. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> okay, thank you. And yes, we did meet, and we have been meeting regularly, and we'll probably be meeting around the first week of August again. Yeah, and our, our goal is to meet before the um, this meeting. Uh, <coughs> that way, we are able to update and kind of come up and bring up the ideas to uh, the rest of the Drug and Alcohol uh, Commission. That way, that if you have any ideas or anything that you'd like to share or include, then we're able to do. For example, with the uh, with the gateway, um, as soon as you put that information out. I'll put it out on our Facebook, on the Drug and Alcohol Commission Facebook. I know Crime Stoppers is going to be out there, uh, but. And I'm pretty sure that you'll have all the other stakeholders like SCAN and other people out there. So these are events that as a Drug and Alcohol uh, Commission would be good if we had either a shirt or a brochure with the resources, the directory to pass out that, you know, if I was there representing mm -hmm. the organization, uh, I wouldn't mind passing out the brochures on behalf of the Drug and Alcohol Commission where I do two, two things at once. So that's something else to consider. So if the stakeholders do have events that are coming up, please do share them with Dr. Gonzalez so that he can pass it over to us and then we can be able to put those up on our on our on our Facebook page so that and we, we have public know. discussed the one at the mall that we already had the funding for September. Yes. So I did call uh, Carlos Salinas, who's the general manager, operations manager for the mall. Um, my email, the email came back, so I called him, he didn't answer. I will try him again, but he does know that we were looking at a September date. Uh, Stephen had the idea because it is the uh, recovery month uh, for uh, substance substance recovery month, yes. and so we, we thought that it would be a good idea to get stakeholders out there, set up a booth, get their information, and maybe have our council uh, members out there uh make it a media media event uh make it fun uh we, we we're in the planning so if anybody has any ideas uh on how to make it great you're more than welcome to share those ideas so that we can already get uh the flyer maybe up and running um and then get reach out to the stakeholders to to find out because we originally the idea was is that we were going to reach out to everybody on that directory but then we realized that the Macy's Center Court is limited to space, so we wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, first come, obviously, is are the individuals who have been coming to our Drug and Alcohol Commission meetings, our stakeholders like Gateway, Border Region, SCAN, and then we'll open it up to everybody else. And at the recommendation of anybody, uh, really, if you feel that there's somebody, maybe a counselor, or maybe there's an organization or an agency that needs to be out there that isn't really uh, heard of, that could benefit from an event like this, then you're more than welcome to make that invitation or recommendation to do so because uh, I think the, the the space that we have there fits maybe about 30 tables, mm -hmm. uh, so 30 booths maybe, uh, and that's just being a little bit over ambitious, but if we can get 20 and, and have an area for our, our commission members to promote, to entice people to come on over and get more information. I mean, it's, it's at the mall. But the idea is is that people are going to be walking from all ages, from young kids to the elderly, and whether it's you know passing out a coloring sheet and letting them know not to do drugs or to be careful about vaping or mm -hmm. anything, really and truly anything, and then particularly touching base on the, on the substance recovery, then we'll be able to, to get our, 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 our mission um, through. Right. What so would it take to get like the radio personalities out there? An to invitation. Do, like, yeah. mm -hmm. We just invite them. Just invite them. Mm -hmm. 
um, I was wondering, um, in reading about addiction and in witnessing some recovered addicts, um, they say that that the success for them was that they substituted their addiction to a healthy addiction. So maybe we can invite other people that can help substitute an addiction to a healthy addiction. Uh, what I mean by that is you can't take something away and then not switch it out with something else. Uh, switch it out with exercise, switch it out with uh, bike riding, with um, connections because uh, addiction is an isolated, isolating mm -hmm. um, situation where um, it creates so many things. So uh, if you can get them to connect through painting, through cosmetology, through something that they can get their self-esteem back mm -hmm. and try to get them mm -hmm. addicted mainly to exercise because that gives you your the stamina and yeah and exact healthy habits exactly to help develop healthy habits healthy cooking when my daughter was in um in that rehab and she's back out again after the year that she's been gone and that's why i'm saying some of these places are just warehouses and profit centers mm -hmm. and not real help but um, if she could have, you know, home economics, uh, cosmetology. I think or that, that's a great idea. And I know that Border Region, do you have Border Region? No, uh, not here. I know Border Region has where they, they do painting and they do, they do those, those kinds of things. I'm not sure if SCAN has, but I'm pretty sure. But yeah, like if there's anybody or even outside, I know, um, just an example, right? Uh, Bolillos has that Picasso's nights and stuff like that. Maybe mm -hmm. they can open it up to having can, just one night for people to to sign up on behalf of the Drug and Alcohol Commission. That's an idea, but that's something that we have to go out there and and push. And it's something that I know that the staff of the city health department loves to help us out and helps us out as much as we can. But I think it, as commission members that we have to do our role. So. I think that's a great idea if anybody has somebody that's connected to a gym or an exercise or like, facility or like going or to Lake Casa, going to Lake Casa Blanca or the Haynes Rec Center. Or there's, or there's running groups, right? Running like groups maybe to create a just run. the person who, who who you can sign up with, and they say, "Hey, we meet every Saturday or yeah. every Thursday to be consistent," and then say, and "You, you know, because once you start exercising, you don't want to stop because mm -hmm. you just you're on that, and then and you get a different uh, right. healthy so rec centers. Yeah, to come over all the rec centers in every district have you know let's get connected and let's you know let's get healthy together or and something that, and that actually gives me another idea which I hate having ideas because I'm but the idea there is uh, maybe connecting with scan border region or gateway and, and identifying these individuals and maybe starting a pilot program if there isn't a program but having to start a pilot program that initiates you know something like that like a, a healthy habit yeah where um, they go to the walk a dog from the first from the animal first, shelter and do something services and two we just want that to be able to have an option yeah. for mm -hmm. for individuals out there to to take advantage of right so finding out first if any of the agency stakeholders are are already have something in place and then if they don't then we'll we'll utilize something and maybe it, it won't cost us anything it's just a matter mm -hmm. of promotion and, and getting the word out there and, and, and doing it but i think that's a really good idea so if anybody else has any other ideas or any suggestions, I think that those would work for uh, having it at this event and maybe potentially uh, on a recurring mm -hmm. Yeah. Just let us know, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Let us know what, so we, we can date. promote it. We need a date. To add to that because I know it goes with the aftercare, right? So mm -hmm. important. And I know that SCAN is starting the, the, the healing program, aftercare programs, they're state funded. And they're, you know, very close to starting, starting those we have, but very limited. And I know that, uh, you know, maybe at some point we can get that going, like in terms of the place, like you were saying, new linkages to new activities for social media. Just even walking, going to meet at the lake, we're going to go and we're going to walk for an hour. And I'm sure the, where we keep the animals the dogs the cats yeah, that are the animal animal shelter. Shelter. they would accept help for, exactly. they, for them yeah. to going out let's to go walk take the, animals. the dogs the out for a walk or no, the, the animal shelter. to the lake the animals. Animals. and then to the city yeah you know, scan also i was just reminded uh scan also did the mental health first aid the oh yeah mental health so maybe for example we can offer a class after september after our event 
and see how many people sign up through our event to make sure that you know people have gone up there and, and, and taken advantage of the classes. And I think that that's something that we can also offer on behalf of the Drug and Alcohol Commission. That doesn't cost us anything, but this is a service right. that we provided and an opportunity for them to learn more. To sure. learn, and it, will that kind of like um, I guess identify dual diagnosis or not? Not for that. No, what it does is it's a training for any any agency, any uh, group. You can. Uh, it's a grant that we have to, to provide uh, mental health first aid like right. training. Okay. How to oh. identify like primary like symptoms and and crisis intervention. Like so like for teachers and people teachers. like that to because see like my daughter. Yes. got missed a lot you know yes but so it's open there we have a grant and you can you can uh, you know in our website you can uh, see who the, it's uh, dr sandra Contreras. she's the one providing the training doing the trainings and and it's just a matter of anybody that is interested to just contact her and and you can be provided to any group uh, if, uh, of well that's why i think Ms. rodriguez is, is right on in saying the, the the event at the mall to have the agencies mm -hmm. and to showcase the programs like the one at SCAN and connect folks uh, but right. also through the commission that's something that we can also put on on, on the website as a message um, healthier habits uh, right for, and for then use the do. city things we already have yeah. the rec centers the, the rec apps the, the lake uh, the bicycles, not the scooters. Though. <laughs> 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 they might go kill themselves. I don't know. Right. <laughs> All the walking trails. And all the stuff. walking yeah. trails. Uh, the and then one of the things for those of you who attended the opioid training for addiction for persons with an addiction, you always have to have them in pairs. Yeah. To do in an pairs. activity. Oh yes. Or, yes. or in group. Yes. Or in group. Right. And so yeah. yeah. Well, the walking clubs, I think we just need to get the word out. Or even of a what's cycle, there. let's get on the bicycle. There's if they don't have a bicycle, let's figure out and find a way to you know, the donate bicycles. Can lend you bicycles. Yeah, the they have bicycles, have bicycles for men. The, I, I, I think people don't. No, no, they don't. They don't, don't I didn't know. I had no clue. Yeah. I didn't either. No. I mean, they don't have enough huge amount but they have but, at least but, 30 but bicycles maybe we can get now. some bicycles to donate to the different groups uh, for that and it's let's switch it out let's switch out your high Something okay like okay well you all come out with the all right the Colleen did you get all the notes and we'll we'll get it out <laughs> <laughs> okay more <laughs> that's just like a hundred more ideas that we have <laughs> okay Thank you. Oh, and I just wanted to add, we haven't done anything with the transition living. It's kind of crazy, been out of town, but whenever anybody who is in the transition team, if you can contact me so we can schedule a, a date and a time to meet um, in, uh, okay, it's July, it's already in the middle, to meet at the end of July or beginning of August. If, if you don't know, the members of the are. transition work group is, 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 is the chair, but Mara, Gracie from Border Region, I didn't get that list. Gracie Perez, Gabriela mm -hmm. Perez from SCAN, Enrique Manrique from SCAN, and Reina Carrillo from uh, Webb County Indigenous. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Those are the ones on the transition committee. And so I'll get these phone numbers. <coughs> okay. Is there any other work group that wants to give a report? There's the, um, well, Colleen gave ours, and then intervention and treatment, Mara is not here. Anyone who's do you know? Do you know if they've met for the transition? No intervention, treatment, and oh, rehabilitation. No, I don't know anything about that. Well, I know that, that Nancy came once, so I, I I think they've met at least once. Okay. But we'll follow up, uh, Madam Chair, to make sure that we get reports in all the work groups. Okay. And um, well, detox met today, and detox transition. Today. Transition is already trying to set up one for the next meeting, yeah. before the next meeting, before the next meeting. Yes. All right, well, that's great. Then I guess we go to the last one, education and prevention awareness. Uh, Manager, I think that's tied in also to uh, with, that, with ours, With ours? With everything uh, we already talked about. And what we'll do, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, we did speak already to the Director of uh, Public Access to see, to get some definite time. They are short staff, but they do a, a good job. We just previewed a PSA that the Blue Ribbon Committee for People with Disabilities did. What they wanted to do was take it to the business community and show where a 
person with a disability is working mm -hmm. and they interviewed the worker saying you know how good he feels and then they interviewed the employer mm -hmm. saying this is a model employee so mm -hmm. why don't everyone should hire but give give a person with disability the okay. same opportunity oh, and it's right, it's right. it's one minute and it's catchy and it's good and PS, it, our public access folks did it and so what we did we asked them for a specific time quicker than later sooner than later so we can tape mm -hmm. now because they do good work I, I don't know another another segment that they did, this is a 30 second spot it's for people who park in accessible parking right. and park illegally oh, yeah. and they did it with PD and, and it was perfectly done that 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 way it's surrounded by with police officers saying if you if you do the crime you, you, you pay <laughs> something you pay like that you pay the fine because and, and let me tell you people see it and all the time send comments to the blue ribbon that they see it and that they're reminded if you're not with a disability and you don't have a placard you cannot be it's mm -hmm. against the law to park in the designated parking because a lot of folks do yes and so that is a catchy little psa that public access did as well so those two uh they did but we got you some specific times and Erica will get with you so we can do it quicker. Great. Yeah, because that, that would help with the uh, pre-planning because we said, well, if we're going to, if, if we're on their time, I think it's best to produce scripts and have them ready and readily available so that if we do have an opening and we say, okay, it's September and we have an opening, what's coming up in the next couple of months that we can already do so that we promote it so we can start announcing we were already thought, talking about Christmas and holidays and how people, you know, are drinking and how people um, <coughs> are being so lonely and yes. mental health. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we've discussed. It's just a matter of putting it into a time frame or, and, and getting in, in with them and, and, and producing them. But yes, anything else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, we're working okay. on it. I did go to Hillside Funeral Home. They agreed that if we needed the picture of the hearse or a, a oh, film of the hearse that that they would do it as long as it wasn't in the morning because their funerals are in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So Tina Jackson agreed. Just let her know the date. Okay. Then uh, are there any other announcements? Anything from the uh, Any That's announcement? Okay. Anything coming up? Okay. Gateway, no other announcements? Okay. Scan. All right. Any indigent? No <laughs> announcements? No. We have um, adjournment next. Would anyone like to make a motion? I make a motion. Okay, we have so a first, second. second. Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Chief, I do that.